Hello friends, this video on electric current and its effects part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us see how a circuit diagram looks like. So it is a pictorial representation of an electric circuit. So advantages of having circuit diagram is that it is understandable by everyone because here we make use of symbols and the symbols have specific meanings. That is one thing. The second thing is it is more convenient. Now if I ask you to draw a real bulb, that is going to be more complex for you because not everybody is very good at drawing. So that means it becomes more convenient. So it is drawn using the conventional symbols of different circuit elements. Now what are circuit elements? The various components which are present in a circuit. For example, the bulb, the battery, the switch. So these are all circuit elements. Now. It is very important that we use the correct symbol for each of the elements. So let us look at the conventional circuit, the real circuit. This is how it looks. But when you draw a circuit diagram for the same circuit, this is how it would be. So where instead of the battery, you use the symbol. Instead of the key, you use this symbol. And you have a bulb. Now let us quickly look at the symbols for a circuit diagram. So let us look at some of the important circuit elements. Like the first thing would be wire because it helps to connect the different other elements. For example, the battery, the bulb, the switch. So all of them are connected through wires. Cell, another important thing because cell is the source of electricity. So it generates electricity. Battery, what is battery? It is nothing but combination of cells. Now. A cell has a particular limit of generation of uh, the electricity. So now when we need more current to be generated, there we need more cells. So we need more power basically. So that at that point of time, a lot of cells are connected together to form a setup called battery. Another important uh, thing is the switch. Now the switch when it is an off condition and when it is an on condition. So for each of these we have specific symbols. So let us quickly look at the symbols which are used in circuit diagram. So for wire we just use a straight line as you can see. For a cell we use two lines, two vertical lines and we make sure that one line is longer than the other one. Now why do we have two lines of different lengths? That's because the longer line represents the positive terminal of the cell and the smaller line represents the negative terminal. Now it is very important to differentiate between the positive and the negative terminal of the cell. That's because when we talk about the flow of electric current, as I said, the conventional current, the direction will be from positive terminal towards the negative terminal. So that means it becomes important to know which one is which terminal. When it comes to battery, since it is combination of cells, therefore a lot of cells put together forms a battery. Now one interesting thing that has to be noted here is that cells are connected together in such a way that negative terminal of one cell is connected to the positive terminal of the other cell. Now why is the connection made in this way? That is because now when all of them are connected in like one after another in that case we expect that the electric current which is generated out of each of these cells they should sum up to give rise to a uh, greater amount of current. So that is the purpose that uh, these have been arranged in this way. Now in your higher classes when you will learn about the internal functioning of the battery, I mean what, how exactly the charges flow from the positive towards the negative terminal, so then you will get to know that why we have this specific type of arrangement in a battery. When you talk about the switch, this is how it is represented when the switch is off. So when the switch is off, the circuit is broken and therefore current doesn't flow through the circuit. And this is how it is represented. Now a switch is often called as a key in a circuit. So key is another word which is used for switch. Now when the switch is off, this is the off mode of the switch. So this is also known as the, we also say that the key is open because you can see the key is open here and this circuit would be known as an open circuit because the circuit is not complete. Whereas when the switch is on, so you see the complete path is being created. So in this case, we say that the key is closed. 
So like switch off is equivalent to open key and switch on is equivalent to closed key. So uh, that's how it is. So these are the basic symbols and we need to remember these symbols in order to draw any circuit diagram. So let us look at a simple circuit diagram. So we are showing the same circuit diagram. Now that we know all the convention, you can see that initially this is the key and right now the key is in open state. Right? What is this? This is the cell, this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. Now as soon as you switch it on, that is the key gets closed. So now you have a complete path for the current to flow. And the current will flow from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal of the battery. So this would be the direction of current. Now please note that uh, while we draw a circuit diagram, we can place the key anywhere in the circuit. So it is not mandatory that the key has to be placed at this position only. So it can be placed anywhere. One important thing is that the cell should be drawn appropriately so that you do not end up drawing both the lines of equal size because that will create a confusion because when you draw it like this, it, it basically becomes a capacitor. Now, what is a capacitor that we will you will learn in higher classes. But for now, you should know that there is a big difference between these two. So whenever you are trying to represent a cell, make sure that the positive terminal is longer than the negative terminal. So now the next question which comes in front of us is, why does the bulb glow? We got to know when does the bulb glow. When we switch it on, the circuit is complete and the bulb glows. But when the circuit is complete, why the bulb is glowing? Will it glow in all the scenarios? We just need to provide a, a complete path or we just need to provide a circuit. So here is another interesting thing. The bulb glows because current is allowed to flow through the wire of the circuit. Now, this is the catch here. Allowed to flow. That means it is also possible that certain materials might not allow electrons to pass through them, might not allow current to flow through them. So, we will again take the same example of the bridge. So, in the last uh, question, we saw that what happens when the bridge is broken? So, if there is no path, obviously the cyclist will not be able to go. Now, let us say that, okay, the bridge is not broken, the bridge is as it is. But let's say there is some strike because of which people cannot cross the bridge. So the bridge is there, the path is there, but it is not allowed to move on that bridge or it is not allowed to cycle on that bridge. So in that case also, the cyclist will not be able to cross the bridge. But in this case, the circuit is closed, but still the bulb would not glow. So this means that there might be some materials which might not allow current to flow through them. Yes, exactly. So it is not necessary that all materials allow current to pass through them. And therefore, in electric circuits, we make use of such materials which allow current to flow through them. For example, normally we make use of wires. And these wires are made up, made up of metals which allow current to pass through them. Copper wires which allow current to pass through them. So not only copper, most of the metals allow current to pass through them. So therefore, the nature of material of the wire is also an important factor which decides whether current can flow through the circuit or not. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.